Meghan Markle's ancestors' life as jazz age stars and a baseball great revealed how her family tree includes cross-dressing jazz performer who toured Europe and player who faced Babe Ruth. It is a family story already known to touch on the horrors of slavery and the glamour of royalty. Now Meghan Markle can be disclosed to have close links to some of baseball's most storied names, and to a jazz performer who shocked by cross-dressing and whose career made her one of the greatest acts of the 1920s. Daily Mail Com has uncovered the extraordinary full story of the new Duchess of Sussex's great-great-aunt Lily Evans, a successful realtor, and her husband William, a black baseball player at a time when the game was segregated, and his parents, jazz performers at the birth of vaudeville. Although the link sounds tenuous, Meghan in fact knew her great-great-aunt well. The older woman died when Meghan was 22, leaving her Los Angeles house to her nephew. Meghan's grandfather Alvin Ragland, who in turn left it to his daughter Doria. Her great-great-uncle William died when she was five, and it is unclear exactly how much of his extraordinary life story Meghan, and indeed, her mother Doria, No. Daily Mail com first revealed, just before Meghan married Prince Harry last month, that William Dement Evans Jr. was a star black baseball player nicknamed Happy in the 1920s and 1930s before Jackie Robinson finally broke the color bar and the game became desegregated. Evans was one of the country's black stars, playing with the Homestead Grays when the team from just outside Pittsburgh was at its most successful in 1931 and 1932, winning those years equivalent of the World Series for the Negro Leagues. Now it can be disclosed that Evans in fact did play against white players, and that those players included some of the best-known baseball players of all time. Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, as well as two of the most notorious, Shoeless Joe Jackson and Charles Sweet Risberg. It is not the only surprise in the Evans family. After he retired from baseball, Evans moved to Los Angeles with his wife Lily, who was born Ragland, and she was to become a housekeeper for Betty Davis before embarking on a successful real estate career. And his parents were pioneering performers in their own right, this time, in an echo of Meghan Markle, in show business performing in segregated nightclubs which were to become famous in the jazz age, such as the Apollo and the Cotton Club, but touring Europe and performing on Broadway. The history casts fresh light on how Markle's family dealt with the challenges of racism and segregation in Jim Crow America, a challenge which the Duchess of Sussex has herself addressed. But it is the story of Happy Evans which is perhaps the most affecting. An oil mail com previously disclosed that Evans played for the prestigious Homestead Grays in the American Negro League, the Negro National League, and independent leagues for black players when U.S. baseball was segregated. Now Evans' grandson Bill Evans IV, who had not known he was related to Meghan until Daily Mail com told him of the link has revealed how Meghan's relatives was one of the true greats. Speaking at his home in Pomona, Southern California, Evans, 61, said, Bill Evans played against the great Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. He actually told me that Josh Gibson, his Homestead Grays teammate, was a better hitter than the great Babe Ruth. Gibson was the catcher on the Grays and had one of the best RBIs in the league white or black. The 1930-31 Homestead Grays were supposed to be one of the greatest teams ever, that year they even played against a white all-star team with the best major league players and beat them. Soon after that the white all-stars didn't want to play them anymore. My grandfather said that many Negro players if they were white would have been the all-star players of the major league. In an interview from 1975 with Evans from Black Sports magazine, which Bill has kept in a treasure trove of memorabilia about his grandfather, the ex craze legend revealed how he had played against a long list of baseball's greats. He said in the interview, My biggest thrill, would you like to hear about it? They had a banquet in Kentucky one time, and they said, Who do you know that has played against Joe Jackson, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Grover Alexander, Mickey Cochran, Satchel Paige, Joe Williams? and Hans Wagner, and they named me. Yep, I played against Hans Wagner on his 50th birthday in 1930, when I was with the Homestead Grays. Louisville, Kentucky-born Evans had initially to contend with the low wages of the Negro Leagues. He doubled up as the bookkeeper for the Homestead Grays, having achieved a degree in business from Livingston College, in Salisbury, North Carolina. All the players found different ways to increase their salaries, but by the late 1920s, 
He was being paid $2,000 for each exhibition game featuring Babe Ruth. He was to say in later life that successful black players, by the late 1920s and early 1930s, were earning as much as white players. This stuff about black ball players playing for $15, that's the biggest lie in the world, he said in 1975. They made lots of money. We outdrew and paid as much as the American Association. Bill, a father of five who worked as a facilities manager for the city of Pomona for 30 years and now works at his local church, said, it was barnstorming. My grandfather, played on several different teams. He said it was fulfilling. They weren't only playing baseball, some of them were bootleggers, some of them were gamblers, some of them were selling paraphernalia so they were making money. Evans's sporting fame meant he had women throwing themselves at him, which was a factor in the failure of his first marriage to Bill's biological grandmother Julia, who gave birth to his father Bill III in 1921. His grandson said, Gramps was something else and they just grew apart. He was adored and he was a ladies' man. He was a baseball player, traveling to Cuba and different places. He was handsome so a lot of women were intrigued by him. However despite the good times Evans had on the Negro League circuit, he was never able to make it to the major leagues which only began allowing black players a decade after he retired when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947. Asked if his grandfather ever felt resentful about the racist system that limited his career, Bill said, I won't say resentful. I would say you could rise above anything and that's pretty much the way I grew up too. He said the racism was rampant. I can't say he was badly treated, but he was probably treated negatively by the people in his circle just because of jealously, because he was outstanding. He was ecstatic when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. And was he bitter about not earning as much as white players? Bill said. No because he was making money. Money wise it was definitely not the same but like I said they found a way to make money. They were resourceful and that's why a lot of them played on different teams during the season. I know Gramps did. My grandfather's nickname was Happy because he was a joyful person and wherever he traveled he made people happy. He was also called the Grey Ghost because he was quick. He played center field, shortstop, right field. He was multi-talented. You see the longevity too. He had a long career, 21 years. He used to talk baseball all the time. We used to throw a little bit. He used to do all kinds of tricks with a baseball. Even at his older age, he'd throw the ball, make it spin, throw it round his arm. In his profile of Evans in his book on the Grays, author Dixon wrote, In 1931 the Philadelphia Tribune reported, that Evans' father was an actor of some repute during the 1920s and 1930s. Bill confirmed the claim and revealed his great-grandfather was William Demond Evans, a 1920s black entertainer who worked in a double act with his wife Lillian Brown, who would dress up as a man. The pair were big names on the Chitlin circuit a group of U.S. performance venues where it was safe and acceptable for African-American entertainers to perform during segregation. The pair were themselves pioneers with their risque act, dressed in top hats and tails. They would execute a surprise ending. Bill remembered his grandfather telling him stories about his great-grandparents. He said, My great-grandparents William and Lillian were famous on the Chitlin circuits. And they had an act where they dressed in tuxedos and top hats and at the end of the show, because Lillian had a nice deep voice. She would pull off her top hat and her long flowing black hair would run down her back and the audience would go crazy, not knowing she was a beautiful woman prior to. Often credited as E. L. Brown she had a lengthy and hugely successful career, claimed to be the first professional to sing the blues in concert, and appeared on Broadway repeatedly, her last being a revival of Kiss Me, Kate in 1952, when she was 67. Brown was also noted for recording her own blues records, was a member of the Negro Actors Guild of America and ran a performing arts school. She was William Evans' second wife and the two did not have children. William Jr. was his son by his first wife. It is unclear if the Duchess of Sussex knows of her intriguing family history. Towards the end of Evans' career he met Lily Ragland in Tennessee, where she was from. The couple then moved to California where there was more opportunity. Bill said, 
my grandfather was probably still playing ball or retiring when they met. Of course they witnessed all kinds of segregation and racism in Chattanooga and Louisville. Back in the 1950s a lot of the blacks from the East Coast and down South moved to California for opportunities and sure enough they found the opportunity. Lily became the first black realtor director, man or woman, so she was a pioneer. After Bill retired from baseball he got into the aerospace industry. I think he was an inspector. Before that, however, Megan's aunt worked for one of the all-time Hollywood greats, Betty Davis. In his book about the 1930-31 Homestead Grays, black baseball historian Phil Dixon wrote, After retiring from baseball Evans relocated to Los Angeles, California at which time his wife became a maid for actress Betty Davis. Dixon told Daily Mail com that he gathered that information while interviewing players and their wives in the 1980s although he doesn't think he spoke to Bill and Lily personally. Bill confirmed Lily was married to his grandfather when they arrived in Los Angeles but said she never told him about working for Davis which would have happened before he was born. Bill said, it must have been years ago. I wasn't aware of her doing jobs before she became a realtor. It's intriguing. With the fruits of her successful career she also gave back and endowed her local community with a swimming pool to keep local children off the streets. Bill remembers swimming in the pool his grandparents built in the parking lot of Lily's real estate office. He said, I used to swim there. Of course that was a rough neighborhood and back then it being Los Angeles. It was kind of gang infested. Bill and Lily, never had children, so all the neighborhood kids were like her children. A lot of them were underprivileged, so therefore she opened up for them every weekend, cooked hot dogs and things of that sort. She knew in order to survive in that neighborhood you had to give back, because it was a tough. She would give the kids little jobs, cleaning up and cutting grass. She was always trying to lend a hand to the neighborhood and in return they never messed with her. Bill would play with the kids, talk baseball and let them know that whatever they wanted to be they could achieve that with hard work, like he taught myself. Evans and his siblings did not realize their connection to Markle. He said his sister had mentioned in passing that Megan's mother's last name was Ragland but Bill had only ever met Doria once at his grandmother's funeral and hadn't made the connection. He said, my sister Christine said wouldn't that be something? if she was tied to grandma, because Raglan's not a common name. We would have seen her on TV and had no clue. In fact Bill had lived with his grandparents at the Los Angeles home for a part of his childhood, but did not know Alvine and Doria well, as he mostly grew up 50 miles outside of Los Angeles in the Pomona area where he lived with his Japanese mother, Kayo and his four sisters. His father Williams Evans III had married his mother while stationed in Japan after the war and later left her to bring up the children as a single mom. He last saw Alvine and Doria at Lily's funeral in Inglewood in 2004. At the time he had thought the house would be left to him by his grandmother, but after her husband and Bill's dad bother died she decided to leave it to Alvin instead. Bill said, I didn't know Alvine really well, I can't say they, he and Lily were close but I guess he was blood. Asked if Lily's decision to leave the house to Alvine had caused friction. Bill said, oh no, at that time, I knew Alvine really didn't have a place like us, and we were okay as far as having a house. The relatives didn't try to keep in touch after Lily died. Bill said, they kind of stayed away from us, at least Alvine did. I think he felt a bit awkward about it. He is glad Doria is able to enjoy the house now, adding, they've made it a home, so I'm happy for them and that it stayed in the family. Seeing Megan and her mother, Doria Ragland, made them incredibly proud and Bill immediately spotted the resemblance between their mutual relative Lily and the mother of the bride during the service. Bill, 61, and his wife Cynthia got up at 4 a.m. to watch the royal wedding after finding out about his grandparents' link to Meghan while they were on vacation celebrating their own silver anniversary. I thought it was fabulous. I just felt immense pride. When I saw Doria, I saw my grandmother because they look so much alike. I saw Lily in her facial features, in the pride that she carried, the class and most of all the love that she had for her daughter. We never would have thought this time would come, especially in the royal family. Walls are being broken down and there's bridges being built and that's very important. Cynthia added, I guess the British people wonder why we're so fascinated, it's because it's like a storybook. To see it and realize you have a connection 
the camera kept having close-ups of her mother there by herself, I just wanted to reach out and hug her. It was just simply beautiful. Bill think his grandparents would have been proud too, he said. Lily and Bill would have been smiling ear to ear. They would love to have seen it. They probably would have said wow, she's making a breakthrough, like we had our breakthrough. To see the walls being torn down like they did, I mean it's impressive, it really is. They were pioneers too. Lily and Megan, wow, two pioneers that tore down walls, that are for the people, that just want to give loving spirits. I see that same type of personality of my grandmother and Megan and God bless her, I'm really proud of her. Asked what he thought of his family tree and its place in history now Megan has married into the British royal family. Bill said, I find the Evans lineage and the Raglan lineage were both pioneers in breaking down walls. They were crossing that color line and doing great great things in a time when there was racism and segregation but they were able to bring things together and I see that in Meghan and in Prince Harry, they are going to do fantastic and wonderful things. He hopes now the link to Doria and Meghan has been discovered again that they might decide to reconnect with his family. He said, you know it's never too late. I most definitely want to meet Doria again and say you look like my grandmother. She probably has great memories of Lily and Bill too. I want to tell her you have a lot more family than just myself and our kids are doing great things as well. I believe it's all destiny and God sets everything up.